Hello there, this is Dave Allen from Mac20Q and today what I want to do is have a look at an application called Camera Bag. And uh, this is the Camera Bag application on screen here and the first thing I need to do is to load an image. Let's try first of all to see if I can load an image directly from iPhoto. Drag something across into here. And it's loaded up nicely. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? So we've got some styles that we can add to this. Let's see what we can do with it. Helga. Click on the plus. Okay, so that gives me a Helga effect. And you can see on this here that I can uh, change the amount of Helga that uh, is on there. That's quite good. And then we've got a remix down here. See what that does. So that gives a few different options. I thought this should be moving this button across here. But it moves it across and then puts it back in the centre again. So it's not really sort of giving me any sort of control over it. I'm just having to guess and see what happens. Let's just change the amount there anyway. And at the bottom here we can see that we've got the Helga effect added to it. And I can switch it on and switch it off. And when I'm going through these ones at the side here, I can see what sort of uh, effects that are available. Skater, let's uh, add Skater to that and see what it does to the large image. Well that's nice and bright isn't it? You can change the amount of filter that is applied to your image there. I'm losing the Skater effect as soon as I have the Helga one there. Let's, let's just take that away. Let's try something else. Let's go for 1962, 1958. Dad's old camera, faded, tinted and hip. Well, I don't know about that. Change the amount we've got on there. I can't really see the point of having this slider there if it always jumps back to the centre again. At least with this one over here when you change it, it goes to the left or it goes to the right. Okay, so I can temporarily disable and re-enable image modification titles in the tray. So that turns it off, that's back to it was originally, and that's with them turned on. The perfect SLR, look for the perfect day. Well, that's a bit over the top, isn't it? And that's what it was like before the filters. And this is what it's like with the filter supplied. This one's given us some vignetting around the edge of the image, so let's apply that one and see what it looks like. So as well as that nice looking vignette around the edge there, it's put a bit of a tint onto the uh, colour of the photograph there. I'm not sure if I like that or not. So we could go for contrast or we could go for colorize. Let's see what we've got. Well, some of these things that are on here are really you know, only used in certain strange occasions. Shadows. Okay, let's have a look see what the shadows is going to do. Now you see with these shadows here, we've got quite a bit of the shadow of this here underneath the tree. Can we do something so that the shadows show up better? Well, it does if I do that, doesn't it? You can see what's happening underneath these leaves a bit better. Maybe it's, maybe it's giving it a bit of a HDR type of thing. It's putting the shadows back in there again, and that's seeing what's in the shadows. Okay, then, so that's uh, having a look at some of the things we can do with the adjustments. We can put borders on there. How about that? There's a border going on, and that is completely ugly. That has got to go. What else can we do? Paper. We've got a torn paper effect on there. Can it be adjusted? I wonder. I thought there might be some adjustments on there, so we could have some sort of uh, say about how much it's been torn off. Let's get rid of that, and we'll try eroded. There you go, it's been eroded there. Look, how about that? And uh, again, we've got no adjustment on there. What does Custom Straight do for us? Well, Custom Straight gives us an amount of border. Okay, so that's... 4.61 that border that we got there. I don't know whether that's in pixels or whether it's in centimeters or millimeters or whatever else. And you can change the color of the border too. In red, lovely. Oh, I say. Is it possible to have one border on top of another? Here we've got some options. We can change the amount of rounded corners we have on there. 35 millimeter bleed. I can't see an awful lot of use for that. Change the whole shape of it to a square, 47 millimeter square. Can we move the photograph in between to say how much is going to be selected within this? I can't see any way of doing it. I thought there should be. What about if I wanted the left side of the picture rather than the absolute center of it? There really could be some more adjustment possibilities in this here. Let's have a look at quick looks. We've got quick look styles, adjust and borders. So obviously if you've made some favorites there, maybe you can uh, Oh, I say, here's our quick looks, our favourites. 
Okay, so what about uh, Gauzy? That just changes the whole thing and puts a luminance curve on there and a colour corrector. And with this colour corrector I can uh, change these curves here like this. Basically you can do what you whatever you want. How ugly you can make it. Colour filter. Colourise. Let's make it more blue. Let's have it so that it's... Uh, change it to a purple. Well, there's all sorts of ways you can make your uh, picture really ugly. What we're getting here, we're getting a quick way of choosing some of the options that are available. So we might have uh, a notched one. Okay, so what else we got? Vignette. Let's go for vignette on this here. With the vignette, we can say how much vignette we want. And we can go for the sharpness of the vignette. And this gives us the radius of the vignette. Okay, so if you want to put vignettes on there, this could be quite useful. And what about grain? Let's have some grain on there as well. And I think we need a bit more grain on there. That's got very grainy, hasn't it? Far too grainy to be useful. But uh, let's put it back down to 39%, see so what comes from that. 21%. This is the offset. Okay, so that's uh, interesting. Not sure as I like it, but it's interesting. Okay, so we can change uh, grain and have discolour in there as well. Okay, so there's our discolour. That's changed the amount of discoloration. This must be able to choose the type of colour that we want for discolouring it. And this gives us an offset. So now all we've got is the multi-tool. So with the multi-tool we can change the amount of exposure that we have with this. So we take the exposure down there, we'll take the contrast up. And we've got a saturation. Let's put a bit more saturation there. So have the colour standing out a bit more. How about that then? Or we could take the saturation right down. Getting towards the black and white territory there. And the contrast up. And the exposure. We'll have the exposure up a wee bit as well. Okay, so using multi-tool there, you can do an awful lot of stuff there. See what it looks like if we go completely over the top with it. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> Okay, so that's a quick look at what we can do with Camera Bag 2. If there was some sort of effect that you wanted to get quickly, then it could be worth having. But those sort of things I can do in Kino is very easily anyway, this sort of paper effect. I think uh, Kino does a better job of it as well. In fact, it even gives me some ways to uh, say how much effect I want. So, uh, hmm. Not terribly impressed with Camera Bag 2. I don't think I'm going to be using it an awful lot because I have pixelmated to do a lot of these things for me although I think there are some things that could definitely be improved with this application there is a chance that it could be useful to some people and it's pretty inexpensive so you could perhaps give it a try and see if it suits what you want to do with your photographs on your Mac bye bye now and don't forget to subscribe to the Mac 20Q Wizard Gold channel on YouTube